Hi Team Lenscap, if you've been following my latest videos, you'll know we've been discovering the delightfully diverse and perfectly picturesque island of Sri Lanka. In my other videos, we've covered the cultural triangle, the hill villages, and even safari with leopards in Sri Lanka. It's been an absolute dream with some of the most compelling vistas, delicious food, gorgeous sights, engaging people, and captivating adventures that I could ever have imagined. But what I haven't mentioned is that our original itinerary actually included the Maldives. I know, massive departure from that internal longing, compelling core luxury seeking behavior that us humans engage in when we think of the ultimate beach holiday. But I do have to thank a very sensible person in my life, Matthew, for suggesting an alternative. See, we only had two weeks to see Sri Lanka and I had jammed as much as possible into a nine day itinerary, reserving five days at the end for the Maldives. But in order to do this, we would have had to skip the entire southern and southwest coastline of Sri Lanka, home to some of its most beautiful beaches. It actually saved us 3,500 US dollars, even though we stayed in some of Sri Lanka's most amazing accommodation. So the end results are us leaving Maldives off of the itinerary and spending this time in Sri Lanka on its beaches instead. Did we regret it? Stay tuned to find out. We begin our tour of the Sri Lankan beaches in Hambantota and this is a super long beach very close to Yala National Park. So if you have come to Sri Lanka in search of the elusive leopard and you've been to Yala National Park then this might be an option for you. We are currently walking through the ever so slightly malodorous fish market and now heading down to the beach. Hambantota Beach is quite windy and I'm not going to lie, it's not the nicest looking beach. There's rubbish everywhere, but it is very wild and rustic in a remote corner of Sri Lanka. There's fishermen's boats on the shore, a few people out for an early morning swim. This is one of Sri Lanka's pride and joys, most beautiful beaches. The sand has got so many shells, it's completely natural. We've seen quite a few people here taking a swim. The weather is divine and it's really beautiful. super long beach behind the small public beach is resort only so you must book into a resort to access that one but the small little beach is pretty cute too and that has public access <laughs> quite a few days of this trip near the beach and we're getting ready to check in, get to our room but I had to stop and show you this pool, it looks amazing and it backs right out onto the ocean which is extremely popular with westerners I've got to say. Oh 
most amazing place we've stayed at so far. The bed is a proper bed without two singles pushed together. And we've got two bedrooms. I didn't even book two bedrooms, but there is a second bedroom. <laughs> Anyone want to come and join our holiday? the Indian Ocean fares, one of the warmest in the world. Can't wait to dip our toes. Marissa is a super busy beach, you guys. There's so many Westerners here, enjoying life on the beach, by the palm trees, cocktail in hand. Does it get much better? I'm not sure. <laughs> It's really beautiful. The journey is just beginning here, but I cannot wait to see what else there is in store. Marissa Beach is such a vibe. It's 5 p.m. and there are so many beachside restaurants. Everyone's out for their seafood platter, the rains are crashing. So much fun. Such a beautiful place. My beard to get wet. Uh oh, massive wave. <laughs> Not massive in Australia speak, but wow, look at that. <laughs> Matthew doesn't even like waves. Living his best life. So mind me, I still have my backpack on because trust issues. <laughs> uh, we left our sunbeds about 200 meters away come for a walk along the beach here amongst all these incredible beachside restaurants and the vendors have told us that basically we'll be sitting underwater if we eat here because as you can see the tide is coming in on all these tables and chairs so eventually we'll be eating with the water surrounding you.
Hotel. We are on a mission today to go and find a secret beach, which is a 20 minute walk from the hotel we're staying at. Last night was really buzzy and vibrant down on the beach, having fresh fish and tea drinks, listening to some music, listening to the waves. It was just such a lovely evening. We just polished off a hearty breakfast, so we have full tummies ahead of our little walk, 20 minutes from the hotel. Let's go check it out. and it's all free so we've just come down here to pay for a sunbed but no need <laughs> it's free and they're also going to supply us with some towels so yeah win thumbs up for secret beach hello hello how are you hey guys secret beach Nice, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon? Oh, but you have bubble gum? Yes. Yeah. I, okay. I, I think this is enough for me. This is fine. Thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks very much. Have a nice day. Thank bye you. Bye. <laughs> There's nothing forced or man-made about it. The weather here is so balmy and perfect. We've had 15 minutes of rain, uh, which got everyone onto the shoreline, but other than that, it's just been so picture perfect. One of the best things about Marissa Beach is that it's a public beach, so you could walk through theoretically any one of the hotels and find your way back onto this beautiful sand here. It's very shelly. Uh, it feels like a massage under the foot. <laughs>
wonderful experience. Like people have been taking photos and videos and sharing WhatsApp numbers. We've just met some guys from Italy. We shouldn't really touch the turtles at all and unfortunately a lot of people were touching them to take photos. But the sad reality is a lot of these turtles do pass away because they just get eaten but we are hoping that as many of them will live tonight as possible. <laughs> Very elated, an absolutely incredibly natural and beautiful experience here on Marissa Beach. Okay, slightly emotional recollections incoming. Today was epic. Marissa Beach has been absolutely magical and I am number one fan of Sri Lanka. Okay, well we must go down to dinner now on the foreshore. So we've got to look out for that uh, seafood platter. This one. Uh, do you have the seafood platter? Yeah, madam. You have the platter? Yeah. yeah. So uh, this one here? Yeah, this one. Yeah. 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 Sea bass. Yeah, sea bass. Yeah, sea bass. Yeah, the dorada. Wow. What's that one? Dorada. Dorada. Yeah. And to, to put uh, like a bit. Two oh, kind of. You're going to have to smaller one. Good. Let's just get the sea bass. Let's just dust this one. Yeah, we like sea bass. Yeah, we get sea bass. Yeah. This is all our food. This is everything. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. yeah. That's great. Yeah. And uh, you wanna? Yeah. yeah. Right yeah. Center, yeah. I will send the bill. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely. What fish are we having? Uh, we're having a sea bass. Woo! Great end to an amazing day. There are so many people out and about on this beach. The tide seems to be out, but it's got a nice little surf, probably not as much as Marissa Beach. Welagama Beach is beautiful and the water is super warm, balmy weather, lovely place to come for a holiday. Now, unfortunately, our itinerary doesn't allow for too much time here. We are moving on to a couple more beaches today. Una Watuna, which is so much fun to say. <laughs> I've probably been saying that all day to Dullawilla Beach where there is a famous swing and then on to Bentoita which is our final place where we will be staying for a few nights in the Taj Bentoita which we cannot wait for, one of the luxury resorts here. We have a quick stop here in Ahangama to check out the stilt fishermen. This is an ancient tradition in Sri Lanka where the fishermen stand on poles and catch fish. So you can see some of the fellas out here catching their fish today. It has become a little bit of a tourist trap and already we've been approached asking us if we want to pay some money, presumably to go out there with a pole and pretend that we're fishing from the pole, which a lot of people do, but there is accounts online that these men are actually not fishing at all anymore. They are just kind of climbing a pole for a 
a photo, which is fine. I mean, it's still resembling their ancient traditions, but there's sometimes no line or hooks on the actual fishing rods. So <laughs> it's a little bit inauthentic at times. These guys actually are fishing and you can see the fish in the bag. So it's quite cool um, and really very unique thing to see really. Uh, I've never seen a fisherman like this before That's because it's unique to Schoenke. <laughs> it's actually really pretty with the water breaking behind them and the surfers doing their thing as well. I must admit I did come into this a little bit skeptical after reading a few reviews online but I don't know. Travel is an adventure and for everyone it's slightly different and these guys actually are fishing so yeah why not? <laughs> why not share their method traditions with travellers? alleyway by Dream Cabana and this is where all of you Instagrammers you will want to come for your photo on this week. So six to seven years ago this was free uh, this palm rope swing that has captivated the internet. <laughs> now it's 500 rupees so they have included a charge and while it looks like you can just walk up to it you do have to go to the bar pay your money and then they will untie the swing for you. So let's see how I go with this. I'm thinking I'm about to make a massive fool of myself, but hey, let's have some fun. Another beautiful and secluded beach in Sri Lanka. This is Jungle Beach. Bit of a trek down, but really beautiful down here. Very serene and peaceful. And quite a lot of tourists, as it seems. a bit of time to explore Gaul, a portside town in Sri Lanka on the southwest coast. This is one of the most history rich places in Sri Lanka. It's been colonized by the Portuguese, the Dutch, the British and they are now an independent. But there is so much history here, old artillery, war museums, maritime museums, there's pretty much any museum you could think of. Artillery lining the seawall. We've just come for a walk down Church Street which has got some really cool old heritage cafes and restaurants. Our plan is to walk along the seawall. We may even see a cliff jumper. These crazy people who jump off the edge of the cliff. If you're a history buff, you are gonna love this place. A lot of the architecture in Gaul represents these previous heritages. We are standing outside our first water pool. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> At the Dutch Reform Church. Let's go have a look. Go and touch it. <laughs> Thank you. 
there's a lot you could do here and you could obviously spend so much more time than we are but critical things to see are the fort the Gaul fort the lighthouse and we just come up to the port area where there's a lovely little platform lookout it's a really charming little town little gift shops and clothes stores um, seagulls <laughs> We've made it finally to our last place on our itinerary here in Sri Lanka. We are at the Taj Bentota Hotel, which has turned out to be an absolute dream. It's one of our luxury stays here. We decided to treat ourselves right at the very end. Last night, we were lucky enough to enjoy a Madhu River tour. It was $60 US dollars per person to travel along 64 separate islands of which only three or four are inhabited. So we managed to get off the boat a few times to explore some of these islands. One was at a temple where we came across a super cute gents squirrel which is native to Sri Lanka. And another stop we were treated to finding out how cinnamon is made where we had a guide show us in front of our very eyes how to make cinnamon from scratch and that include scraping off the bark and then cutting it into the cute little twirls that you see when you have cinnamon in your meals. He also made us a piece of rope out of coconut husk that was so strong. It was a really wonderful place to experience the elements and how Sri Lankans use natural elements in their day-to-day -day life. After this we then went and experienced a foot spa. A fish foot spa I should clarify. <laughs> oh my gosh I think we are about to try a fish massage which I'm gonna squeal I know it I'm just gonna scream I don't think I can do this. It's okay. Oh, I don't know about this. Should we go to the big ones? Oh, they're massive! These ones, oh, these ones are small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can do it! So best funny, time is here. It's a tick one. <laughs> so, best time is... one gnawing away. Proper going for it here. Yeah. 
I gotta say it was a really strange sensation and I have got a little bit of a weird thing with fish so having them touch my feet was crazy. Matthew was a bit more adventurous and let them all over his feet. <laughs> then we were driven to the inlet where the Madu River meets the Indian Ocean. So it was a great way to explore the local area and do something completely off the cuff, unplanned. Just a really relaxing evening out on the river for about two hours. So for us, the next few days will just be relaxing here on the beach, enjoying the lovely Taj Mantota hotel and resort. Uh, the pool is beautiful and looks out over the Indian Ocean, so it's a real treat and a lovely luxury way to finish our holiday. place that's 1,000 rupees per bed overlooking the Indian Ocean. We are setting up for the day in the jungle here on Bento Beach. Thank you so much for joining me over the last two epic weeks of journeying through this beautiful country. If you haven't yet checked out my other videos then please do because each part of Sri Lanka has been so incredibly varied and diverse. We've had completely different experiences in each part and they've all been so amazing and wonderful. Thank you so much for watching as always. I really appreciate you guys. And if you've enjoyed this video or it's been of some use to you or amusement even, then please like and subscribe. I'd love to have you as part of the team. So we'll see you on the next video. Thank you again. Bye for now.